All right, another project with Petro. Um, it is cold. You can see a frozen bottle of water here sitting in the garage, but we're going to try to keep going on the cat boat. Um, you can see I got a mess going with the bumper and other projects, and I've been throwing the cardboard boxes on here. So first step is to get all of this off so I can keep working on the boat. Got the propane heater going. It's about 17 degrees outside, but went skiing yesterday. So now I'm going to just hang out in the garage until it gets too cold. Um, next step is I'm going to start to uh, work on mill. I've already milled up the material. Sorry. I'm going to start to, you know, cutting and maybe getting some of this combing around the cockpit taken care of. I've got the material here. So I'm going to, after I clean this up, I'm going to pick through that. Um, I'm going to route the edge. I'll show you how I'm doing that. And then I think I may, if you can see this over here, not sure where the camera angle is. Um, I'm going to start cutting this detail into it so I could have two pieces with this detail taken care of so that I can um, take this off and put the next step into place. So it might be a couple days here because I don't have a full day of working today, but uh, we'll keep on going. So I'm realizing this is probably the first time you're seeing the inside of the cockpit of this boat. So you can see a nice, wide, open, comfortable space. Um, it's one of the benefits of these boats. It's only 14 feet long, so it, essentially it's the same length as a sunfish. Um, but you can see how much more room there is compared to a sunfish. So this is the pieces that I've been preparing for to take off. You can I don't know how where the camera angle is, but this is loose. This piece on my back here is all cupped and cracked. The side you're looking at is actually pretty stable, but in order to get the color kind of consistent, I stained it. Um, it was painted uh, green at one point before me, and I stripped it, and it was all water stained and everything, so I've stained it. Anyway, it's, it's kind of a mess. It probably doesn't show that way in the camera, but this is coming off, um, and this is what I'm going to be replacing. I also need to replace this. I don't know if you can catch down there. It's all rotted. And then I need to replace this cut, uh, top cap. Um, then the last step of the project, and this will be when the weather is warm before I put it in the water, besides varnishing, um, I'm also going to repaint all of these decks with an epoxy um, bilge paint or an epoxy uh, you know, paint intended for the cockpit. I'm, I'm missing the um, correct term of the paint. Um, but anyway... Um, that's where I'm going with this whole thing, and that's where I've been uh, getting to um, as we've been taking these steps. So we'll keep on going. All right, I got you sitting on the inside of the boat now so you can see what this looks like. Ah, picked up my chisel instead of my screwdriver. So, this is that inner corner, and you can see I still have to take some uh, of the plugs out, but you can see why I'm talking about how, like, messed up this thing is. So, you see how loose that is, and I know I just took the screw out, but it's broken up and everything like that. So, all I'm trying to do is take this off so I can expose this so I can get that joint, that the shape of that joint and match it to the other piece. Well, I decided the best way to do this, I believe, is to create a pattern out of a piece of cardboard. So what I'm doing, and I need to, maybe this is not a thick enough piece of cardboard. Mm. Yeah, it might be. It might be. So, anyway, I'm thinking this out loud here, so I'm going to, it's just going to be like this. So, I've got some shadows going on here, apologize for that. Let's see if I can get this out of here. So, I'm going to do it about there. So, the first thing we're going to do is 
I've actually got carpet scissors, but they work pretty good. Then I'm going to transfer this pattern onto the new pieces of wood. And of course, when I do with the new pieces of wood, I'll use, I'll make square cuts. So this doesn't have to be totally perfect, but see, we'll go like that. Boy, that is just off of there, but that's okay. Um, now what I'm going to do is on the back side, what you'll see here, I'm going to trace this out on the back side. Um, need a better. Let me do that again. My pencil is not making it easy. All right, so now I'm going to try to cut this off of here. We'll see what this looks like. I might need to do this twice. Can you guys even see that? This is just the back of a cereal box. Okay. All right, let me cut this off here straight off just to get rid of the excess. Now, how's that look? Pretty close. I don't think this will work. If I trim this off a little bit. I'm going to just clean that up. You don't have to watch me do it, but I'm just going to clean that up around the edges. I'll get a... I'll get a razor knife and just sort of clean it up to make sure it's perfect. And that'll be my template. Then we'll come back once I'm ready to put this on the new piece of wood. All right. Hopefully the mic's still working here. Um, you've got the template. This is going to be the port side. So that's why the template is back backwards. So I've got this matched up like this. I don't know if you can tell from the angle of the video, but this is not quite a 90 degree um, because the back of the boat, actually, the back of the boat actually pitches a little bit. Um, so, all right, then I'm going to sketch this. I actually don't like the way that's cut, so I'm going to round that off a little bit. Okay. Again, I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of hard on the on the camera. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. See that? You just see the pattern that I'm making out there. So next step is I'm going to get my... I think I'm going to do it with my jigsaw because that will give me the closest to a 90 degree cut. Um, I could use my coping saw, but I think I'm going to do my jigsaw. All right, we got the jigsaw. Let's see if they got the right speed going. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now, if you've ever done any finish work, the best thing to do, and, and it's hard to tell because the camera, I'm not zoomed in as much as I'd like to be, but I actually, you can see right here, I left the line. And the reason that I left the line is now, if I want to get a really nice, precise finish, I actually will sand to that line, either with a power sander, or, or in this case, it's such a little bit, I'll do it by hand. Um, but then that'll give you that perfect finish. But I'm going to mimic this on both sides, and uh, we'll be ready to go. Then the next step, actually, what I'm going to do is take my router and route a quarter round. Um, 
to the top and bottom of this. And actually, that's kind of it, almost ready to go to be slapped on the boat at that point. Okay, you'll see that we've got the two pieces um, matched together. And I'm going to, I'm pretty happy with both of those. I don't know how close I can get with the video. Um, pretty happy with both that came out. You can see they're symmetrical. If I back them up, they look identical, which is great. The other thing I've done, I'm going to call it book matched because um, what you'll notice if I step away, I've actually book matched the grain on the wood. Um, and if you see, as I work on my way all the way down, you'll see the tighter grain on the top and the more open grain on the bottom. And the reason that I've done that, and if I actually put them together, you can see that they, they, they match up which is pretty cool. The reason I've done that is when you flip them, like if you envision them on the boat going this way, going all the way around the cockpit, um, the grain pattern, the tight and the open grain, the tight grain and the open grain, when you come around here, when you sort of run it along that way, you're going to have similar grain all the way around uh, the boat, which I think will be kind of cool. So you know, just just an added uh, thing that I thought about when I was when I was uh, putting it together. So uh, next step really is to set up the router to do the quarter round all the way around the pieces. And I'm going to do the quarter round on the top, and I'm going to do the quarter round on the bottom because if I go back to the boat again, I'm trying to match the boat here. You see, that's the quarter round, the profile. I don't know if yeah, you can kind of see it right there. Um, but it's also under here as well. And the reason it's under there is because, you know, there's space and, you know, sometimes you're storing jackets or life jackets or, you know, anything, a uh, water bottle will roll underneath there. So, and it's on your back where you're sitting on the boat. So it's nice to have that smooth edge on both sides, um, so that you don't catch yourself on anything, get any splinters or anything like that when you're using the boat. All right, so I'm trying to make do with what I have. Um, I should have a full flat bench set up here so that I have full supportive, but I'm gonna do it quick <laughs> and I'll probably mess it up and regret it. Um, so next I'm gonna try to do the round over um, on, on the top of this and on the bottom of this uh, for the next step. One, the top pass is gonna be easy because I can use the ball bearing and just uh, on this uh, uh, quarter round bit, um, flipping it over is going to get a little tricky because I won't have the straight edge for the ball bearing to run on. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. Could probably set up the router table to do this. Um, but that's set up too. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, I've come up with a pretty good system I'm kind of happy about. So um, remember I was trying to figure out how to get that round over to be even on both sides when I lose the round over at edge. So I've got this extra piece of material that I made. So I'm using that extra piece of material as a fence for the, for the uh, roller at the bottom of the router bed. So I'm just clamping it so that I have that. And I'm going to work my way down as I do that, and you'll see what happens, if you can see it on the camera, I keep saying that, I guess I should stop. You can see this roller at the bottom of the router will actually roll against the other piece and use that as my straight edge. So it works pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna show you the result of my router trick. I don't know if you can, See how I get that edge rolled on both sides. I'm going to roll it over to the back side, to the bottom side. You know, <coughs> see the profile that I put on that. <coughs> Coughing because I got <coughs> uh, sawdust in my mouth. Um, but no, I think that worked out pretty well. Working that both sides and I can just do some light touch-up sanding to, like you see, there's a little bit of a 
V right there, no big deal. I'll just hit that with sandpaper. Finally at a point where uh, I've been wanting to get to on this whole project, the old combing is removed. Um, and now I'm at a point where I'm going to try and steam bend um, the uh, combing that I've made and fabricated that you watched me do. And like most of the things I've done, I've never steam bent before. So uh, I'm going to try to use a uh, Home Depot uh, drop cloth plastic bag. So it should be interesting to see if it works. In the meantime, too, I've got a couple other things um, like down that, uh, that center board trunk. I got to do the wood on there. So I'll be making those as well while I'm waiting for uh, the steam bending to work. Also thought I'd show you um, how well the rub rail came out. So you can see I'm pretty, pretty happy with uh, how the joinery ended up coming out and what it looks like on the boat overall. So making some good progress. So let's get going on the uh, bending. I've got two components to this. I'm going to use a wallpaper stripper. Um, I've had this for years, so it's not that big of a reservoir. So I think I'm going to have to pay attention to it. Um, and it's a long piece. So hopefully this will be enough to, to get it going. Um, and then what I've actually done now, you can get kits from this from like total boat, um, that are like vacuum bags or bags that you can seal and melt together and everything like that. Um, I'm, this is, I've, I've always wanted to do this. I've never needed to do it. Um, so I'm not gonna, and I'll probably never do, need to do it again. Um, unless I have a lot of fun with it. So I'm not going to spend a ton of money on this, getting some real, you know, building a steam box and, and things like that. Cause I wouldn't want to store it. So anyway, I got, um, drop cloth. It's two mil thickness. So a little bit heavier than the cheap plastic ones. And I'm going to with a stapler, I'm just going to make a bag out of this drop cloth. And then hopefully at the end, I'm going to stick the uh, steamer into it and let it go for an hour and see how soft it gets. So that's, um, we'll just get started. So I'm going to try to cut this and, and make a bag out of it. So I'll put a little time lapse on while I mess around with it. And then we'll see when it's done. Let me show you what I've done here. So I've first rolled it over and stapled it. And then I got just some clear packing tape and um, taped over the scene so I can make it sort of airtight. Now, what I will say is that if it works, this should kind of blow it up like a balloon. And then I'm going to have to poke some holes in it. So to relieve the pressure and just let it go. And I, I'm sort of thinking that I want to poke the holes at the end of the piece um, so I get full steam throw flow through the whole thing. You'll see how I've got the tube put into place here and it's plugged in but it can take a little while and this is not a very big water reservoir. I don't know how hot this is going to get um, so this might take a long time and I'm, I've got plenty of other stuff to do while I'm doing it so uh, we'll see how it goes but I'm kind of excited about it. I think it'll be a fun project. I think it's working. So the plastic is a little soft. It's not, doesn't seem like it's melting. So that's good. That was one of my concerns. Um, so I've got this coming in. It's, it's collecting a little bit. I've poked a little bit of holes in it so we can let the water drain out. But you'll see I'm getting steam all the way up. Definitely more than half. It's about, so if you can see, it goes to about that fence. And if I or that sawhorse, and if I stretch back, it's going pretty good. And I've intentionally put it on this side because this is the side that has the bend. Where when I get towards the back, it, it's it's pretty straight. So you can see, like this is the part where the bend is going to be. And then once I get to about this cleat, it's just a really shallow curve. So I think we should uh, be okay to not get the total end of that board um, super. Um, super uh, bendy so i'm just going to keep going like this for i don't know try for an hour or something and in the meantime i've made the centerpiece 
I didn't bother wasting time showing you how I'm doing it, but it goes right here at the end. And I'm going to just uh, pre-drill all the holes on this um, and try to snap that into place. Okay, we're going to see how we did here. It's been soaking for a lot longer than I thought. I, gosh, it's been in there for at least, I don't know, four hours because I got all tied away with uh, working on the center console. Uh, it's your centerboard trunk. I'll show you that. So that, I'm very happy with how that came out. We'll zoom in. That needed to come in so that I could rest the combing um, on the top of it where it sits. So I didn't make a mistake, but I'm doing it not the way I wanted to. <laughs> um, and what I say, what I mean by that is that um, and it's just, I can't get it to where I want it to be. What I mean by that is I wanted to do the starboard side of the boat. I ended up not realizing because I did it upside down that I steamed <coughs> the port side. <coughs> not a big deal. I just was thinking the other way. I didn't really do anything wrong. It's just I was thinking of it another way. I have to make a new bag. Wow, that is like a wet noodle. Okay, so I got that. It's steaming. I'm going to move pretty quick here. See the steam coming off of it. And then I'm going to set you guys up over here to show you how I think I'm going to put it on. So let's see how this works. I got to move quick. Got all my clamps set up. I got everything where I think I want it to be. And now I really hope this works. Um, oh, yeah. So I got my adjustable square because I want to make the combing the same height over there as it is over here. Whoa, way off. I'm breathing so heavy. Sorry about that. Oh. I don't know if you guys can see that, but let's see if I can get in a little bit closer. So we are bent into place. Got enough clamps on there. Let me bring it back. So you can see what we're dealing with here. It doesn't really look like it, but it's taken a pretty significant bend over here. See that? Pretty cool. All right, so I think I've got it. Now I'm just going to step back and make sure it looks good. It's, it's lower there than I anticipated to make it square across the centerboard truck. But as long as it looks okay, that's probably how the other one was. So I'm just gonna have to go with it because I, I am making a mess of the camera work here. I'm so sorry. Um, because that fit right there, that was measured off of the old boat. So that's where it was. So I think we're okay. Let me get some screws and get set up for the next step. All right, so next step here. I've got this set up with my drill, with my uh, screw bit. This is my drill bit. Countersink is all set up. I've made it as even as I can. The boat sweeps up, so it's closer to the deck in the front than the back. That must have been how it was before. I don't really know. I think it's just going to have to be what it's going to have to be. So we'll just plug away here and hopefully I'll not mess this all up. Screw number one. Oh, this is so nerve wracking after all this work.
All right. So you don't have to watch me do this, but you get the idea of what I'm doing down here. So I'll show you the pictures after.